will frame the anti graft agency, the Anti Corruption Commission or ACC. For the past weeks, the Commission has intensified mandatory need for public officers to declare their assets, citing punitive measures for any failure. The Commission recently had its act reviewed, bringing a few changes to the nature of assets declaration. Well, the head of the ACC, Francis Ben Kaifala, is here with me to tell us more. Welcome, Commissioner, to Bottom Line. Yes, Mr. Kapoa, it's always a pleasure to be here. You too can have your say on our Facebook page at SNBC TV, channel 31, or by SMS to 030 022 639. 030 022 639. My name is Joseph Egwinda Kapoa. Let's begin with the amendment of the ACC, Mr. Commissioner, in relation to asset declaration. What are they, those amendments to your, your act? Well, I think for the, for the listeners or viewers to understand, we have to start first of, with what was and what needed to be amended. Okay. So the act, the ACC Act 2008, did well in setting the stage for asset declaration. In section 119 of that act, it was established that public servants or public officers were supposed to declare their assets uh, once every year, ending on the 30, 31st of March every year. So when you come into office, you declare your assets within three months after you come in. Thereafter, once every year, starting the 1st of January to the 31st of March every year. So that was what existed. The difficulty with that is the compliance rate had been very low over the years, usually below 50%, sometimes even below 30% of, of compliance. That means for all the, the core of, of public officers in the country, we used to have, let's say we give out 45,000 forms, we will get back probably 11,000. So firstly, it was a waste of resources because printing all those forms and the compliance rate was low. So the asset declaration regime was not reaching its desired purpose because you need to have minimum, minimum, you used to have about 60, 70 percent uh, public officers complying with public, uh, with the asset declaration regime. The difficulty the commission had was there was a convoluted system of ensuring that there is some form of subtle pressure on public officers to declare their assets. So, for example, the law required that if you cannot declare, we have to gazette. After we gazette, we, 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 we publish your name in two newspapers. After that, we file papers in court against you personally. So, if one, if, 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 if 45,000 public officers did not comply, we have to file against each of them personally in court for us to go and argue with them why they have not declared and after that the court can then impose certain measures and it is only after that that the criminal punitive, punitive measures itself would have come into place so this is the kind of asset declaration regime that i met when i became commissioner and uh, even before i became commissioner it was recognized that this was problematic this was not really good uh, the asset declaration regime was not realizing its purpose so once I became commissioner, I picked on, on the project to reform that aspect of the law to make it better, to, to, to remove that kind of convoluted system of declaring, to, to make it more efficient, more organized, more user-friendly, and of course to make it easier for the commission to be able to impose certain sanctions if public officers cannot comply. That is why we then put uh, in, in, in our 2019 amendment, which was passed in Parliament in December 2019 and signed by the President. In that amendment, which we, 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 we revolutionized 
almost entirely the asset declaration system whereby firstly when you become a public officer you have to declare your assets but once you declare your assets you only declare after two years so instead of doing it every year you now declare every two years because if we do it yearly sometimes by the time we collect the assets by the time we get the system in place a new a new year has started for asset declaration so we're not able to do asset analysis we are not able to pro public officers we are not able to pick up issues that were with the asset declarations basically there was no asset declaration analysis being done can we also add um, i know you'll, you'll continue this but can we yes. also add that um what informed that amendment could also be attributed to the capacity of, of staff at the acc to handle oh, yes oh yes again I agree with you and that thank you for pointing that out also the capacity at the ACC the entire asset declaration department or the unit that has to deal with asset declaration there are only four staff there the entire ACC staff strength is about is about 200 countrywide wow. so <laughs> you can imagine having to every year how to do asset declaration how to, to process them and all those things so that's why one of the amendments that was done was really to try to organize this better for it to be biannually instead of annually and also there are other amendments in terms of for example if you fail to comply the notice system was changed a little bit to make it more robust and strengthen it but most importantly we brought in an innovation that is nowhere that is found nowhere in africa we brought in a system whereby if public officers do not comply with the assets declaration regime the institution can take steps to force them to comply and therefore we we brought in the punitive system whereby the salary of the public officer could be withheld so the asset declaration process starts from the starts from the 1st of january to the 31st of march or when you come into office three months after after that you are in default okay but the commission can extend the time all right we'll come to that that bit uh commissioner but then i mean you are talking about what informed um the amendment i mean based on what you met yes. and probably what you intend doing and how it's all been fearing on yeah. but then you mentioned one key aspect of the people of say Leon, uh public officers or public officials what to make who are these who public is officials. a public offic official? Well, a public official really is somebody who is paid from the consolidated, consolidated revenue fund. That is the easiest way to, to define it. But when you are employed by government or in an institution that is owned by government or in an institution that is, that is owned by government, either partly or wholly, you may qualify as a public officer. So everybody who works for government is a public officer. However, for the purposes of asset declaration regime, that is one change we have also brought. We found out that uh, before now, even the cleaner, the janitor, people, every police officer, every teacher, as long as you are paid by government, all nurses in the country were all public officers, they were supposed to declare their assets. So we realized that this was not a good way to run an asset declaration system. So we have now reduced that pool by setting a new parameter to say, amongst public officers the ones who have to mandatorily declare their assets are as follows one if you are appointed by the president so all political appointees all presidential appointees are supposed to declare their assets so as long as your letter is signed by the office of the president whether it's the secretary or the, to the president or the president himself you are supposed to declare their, your assets the second category of people who have to declare their assets are all public officers above in grade seven or above so if you are in grade seven and above you are supposed to declare your assets as a matter of mandate who are those qualified for that category that grade grade seven grade seven when you are employed you are in the grade in every institution i'm sure you have a grade system here yeah. so it's usually people who are more closer to senior management level it leaves out the auxiliary staff it leaves out other people who do not have much um senior roles to play in public institutions and the idea behind this is they they really do not have posed that much risk to 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 corruption to being corrupt 
as those who are grade seven and above. And grade seven above is not very high. Grade seven is is an intermediate grade. But however, even if you are below grade seven, if you are in a position wherein you are a fiduciary in your institution, or you deal with money, or you take decision making like you are in charge of giving licenses you take part in the process of giving licenses that is a serious corruption risk those people below the seven are also covered in this asset declaration regime they are supposed to declare their assets because some of those people can be even more corrupt than ministers and people who are above now you made a point commissioner but research yeah. also suggests that some public officers you know do not have graded staff you know and the latter are not made are we are a good number of the anomalies that we are. I mean, you suppose probably if that you not all institutions are graded, but that is not the case, especially for some MDAs. If they don't, if they are not graded, they are supposed to look at their position based on if it was an MDA that is graded, what positions will occupy the seven and above. How do you come in as a commission in that instance? Well, act actually, we come in if you have such a situation, it's for you to bring it to our attention, then we can send you a criteria of those you are supposed to consider for consideration so that is really it we have not had that report yet about people who don't not understanding whether they have to declare but if we have a particular institution that is not graded i thought that every public institution was supposed to have been under a system of grading where you can identify those who are below supervisory level those who are managerial level those who are above and those kinds of things but if any institution does not have this kind of understanding then they are supposed to to be and we also have a difficulty whereby um i have had that members of boards are saying that they are not supposed to declare their assets that is a mistake they are supposed to declare their assets on the basis that they are appointed by the president they are, they are appointed by the president as one and also their fiduciaries they take part in decision making that directly affects what happens with other people's interacting with them in public office for example you cannot be the head the, the member of a board of director of south cap not come and these other places and you say you cannot declare your assets you are supposed to declare your assets because you are a serious corruption risk compared to every other person if you fact. are a member of a particular board let's say south cap you just mentioned mm -hmm. and at the same time probably a lecturer of a university do you declare your assets twice no, you don't declare your asset twice. You declare your asset once, but you, de you disclose where it says employment. You disclose where you are employed. So it is clear that you are declaring in respect of those two declarations. You don't have to declare twice. And in the same form, you will need to explain, to disclose, or to fill the forms we are necessary or we are required to fill in, in so far as assets, liabilities, and other areas are concerned. For both Actually, services. the form is such a way that you only be asked, for example, I am Commissioner of ACC. Okay, I also lecture at the university. I can prove that I am Commissioner of ACC and lecture at the university. Okay. But my assets are my assets. It does not. I do not own a particular asset for from the college where I lecture or a particular asset for 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 ACC where I work. I will have to leave all list all my assets, properties, bank account statements, debts, liabilities, everything that I have, equities that I have in companies. No. Those I have to list. Uh, Commissioner, are those who did not declare their assets before the amendment affected in any way or they can survive under the second call if they do so uh, before the 31st of yes we we have put it in such a way that if you have never declared your assets you declare your assets now and you make it comprehensive there are many people who have not declared their assets in the current government there are many people some very highly placed who have not declared their assets at all they can now declare their assets and make it comprehensive so that it covers everything coming up to now however if they fail to declare their assets against this extension which expires at the end of this month then of course there are going to be consequences and those consequences have been graded after your default right now they are in default they were supposed to have their salaries were supposed to have been suspended but that has been extended to the end of this month after we are going to write to the Akata General. I've already spoken to the Akata General. I've spoken to HRMO. I've spoken to the head of cabinet secretariat. I've spoken to people who are in the position. We we'll also contact um, those who are human resource officers in MDAs, for example, like XLBC, to make sure that anybody who is responsible to pay salaries of those people, we have to withhold them until they comply. 
Once they comply, they can access their salary. On what compulsion must they withhold if salaries? They are supposed to withhold their salary by directive coming from the commission. And if that directive comes from the commission and you go against it, you will be taken to confer an advantage on somebody who was not entitled to it. So, for example, if the commission writes to SBC Director General to say, Mr. XYZ have not, has not declared their assets, do not proceed to pay them. And you proceed to pay them after receiving that directive, you can be arrested and prosecuted for conferring advantage on that staff and preventing the, the application of law on that staff. At the end of the day, that is not really what we want. It is not the punitive aspect of this law that is important to us. It's just that sort of pressure that can put for people to know that asset declaration is a, is, is, is a national mandate. You have to declare so that the public can be able to track what you have so that even for yourself tomorrow. For example, when the, the, the state chief of protocol had that issue about when she went to the to to the church to TB Joshua and all those issues came, what saved her principally in the investigation that we conducted was the fact that that very building she had started declaring it from 2013 2014 coming onwards. So it was difficult to say that she built the house when she became state chief of protocol in 2018. So you see the kind of advantage that such a thing has for a public officer. It is good for you, it is also good for the state. You are supposed to do it. So those punitive measures we have put, like to withhold your salary, and it does not end up withholding your salary. If after three months your salary is withheld and you do not declare your assets, you could you should you another notification will come to the institution or those responsible to pay your salaries for you to be to be to be removed from office. So that now comes from somebody to somebody who has power to remove you from office. So for example, if you are a minister, the notification will go to the president. If you work in an institution like the SLBC, the notification will come with the head of SLBC. If the president refuses or neglects to remove that person. No, I don't know if the president will uh, No, no, it's a brief. Assuming no, no. without considering that happens. Uh, will, will that instance of um, conferring advantage, I mean that you just explained, be applicable? it will be it will be applicable yes okay it now means, I, it means it means the person who is responsible it does not have to be the president it can be anybody it could be for parliament it could be the speaker of parliament for 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 acc it could be the commissioner of acc for slbc it could be the director general it could be anybody in the ministry it could be the minister that will address the letter to that your staff are not paid and therefore they should be dismissed they should be suspended not dismissed they should be suspended now if they do not do that or if that notification comes to you and you refuse or fail to suspend that person of course it can be escalated to some other things but there is also a last one after six months of you not declaring your assets that is where it becomes tricky because after six months the third notification will come for you to be dismissed from your position and that notification again goes to the head of the institution or anybody who has sufficient power to remove you from office and then of course but imagine if after three months you do not de declare assets it has been extended for two months you still do not declare after that two months they seize your salary you still do not declare after another three months they sustain your office you still do not declare then after six months it means you've basically just dismissed yourself from public service it means you do not really want to be there anymore so those things are there um, it's a new law it has not really been tested yet it is the first time this is being done in Africa. Uh, we are hoping that we will not reach a stage where, for example, like you said, we can bring notification to the attention of the president and the president does not proceed to, to dismiss because then, of course, it will demoralize the whole effort. What about those who are on sick leave? I mean, sometimes you have protracted illnesses, you know, and the institution grants, you know, some, some level of leave to those officials also. And the process where one cannot either by some you know uh, temporary infirmity or mm -hmm. so and that time elapses what happens that is when why we are of that is why the commissioner has power to extend at every given time so the commissioner can even extend for you for a year if you know that you are in such a circumstance you bring it to the attention of the commission okay you have somebody bring it to the attention of the commission that you are seeking medical treatment in england so nobody i mean the law like i always say the law is made for human beings and they are implemented by human beings and can, human can beings that form, take special Can that form be failed or signed on my behalf and instruction? No, it cannot be signed on your behalf. 
What about on my it's a declaration? No, you have to declare assets. So you cannot instruct somebody to do it for you. You have to declare yourself and sign. That is why at the end of the day you affirm that what you put there is true to the best of your. And asset declaration is personal, so it cannot be delegated. You have you can make somebody to fill it. That's fine. You can make somebody else to do everything about it. That's fine. But when it comes to that final signature, it has to be your signature, and the submission has to be a submission. Is right? some print signature allowed? Some print signature is allowed. Yes. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, are you not by any uh, stroke of imagination um, condoning corruption by this extension, general extension of um, uh, May 31st, when people are uh, aware? I mean, this thing has taken so long. People have been appointed, let's say, over two years, as the case may be, so maybe some more, you know, and then you're coming, not actually reading the books, but now saying, okay, you know what? Um, let's let's expand this thing. I mean, you have the power, but you, let's let's expand this and see what happens. Is it another way of seeing warning before wounding? Well, you see, like I said, when it comes to soft law, okay, there's hard law and there's soft law. Hard law is the one, for example, you you are found guilty and you are sentenced. So there's soft law. The purpose of soft law is to really put pressure on you to act, okay. So, because the main purpose of soft law is to put pressure, it cannot be the primary objective. So, the purpose of asset declaration regime is not to punish people. But people are punished because they fail to comply. So, what you do is, you give them room, basically room to hang, the proverbial hang yourself. The time has finished, they tell you again, okay, this time has finished. We understand people may have been is the beginning of the year we give you another one to two months after the one to two months you now have yourself to blame so when anything happens you cannot say oh it's because mr kaifala like people i remember when we started when when we promulgated this 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 particular amendment amendment including this asset declaration people said oh it is because the commissioner wants power the commissioner likes power he wants to be the most powerful man in the country it is not the idea the idea is seeing that there are problems with the law and to reform it for better results. So for example, the way things are going, we are heading for 90% compliance. That 90% compliance, the highest we've ever come to compliance is 50%, just above or below 50%. So if we get 90% compliance first time in the country, that is a good thing for the country. And we can be able to now track public officers living properly and better when is it 90% so, how is that research measured I mean what informs that is because we have the pool already we already know how many public officers are from grade 7 and above ah, okay we also know how many public officers are fiduciaries we also know how many public officers are otherwise qualified to declare their assets if they are not fiduciaries or they are not grade 7 and above so once we have that pool we give out the asset declaration target in that pool. If 90% of that pool complies, then it's a 90% compliance. So that's, 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 that's um, 90%. Is it following this intense um, um, public notices that you just uh, issued or the press release that you just issued or is it actually coming following your, your uh, amendment? What I'm saying is our target is 90%. Okay. Our Absolute target is 100%, but our minimum target is 90%. 90%. Which and that 90%, have? no, we would not have 90% right now. And that is why we put out a public notice. Okay. To say public officers, in fact, at the time we put out that notice about two weeks ago, there was only about 20% compliance. Can you imagine? So imagine if we did not have all these powers to impose sanctions at the end of the day. See, I always tell people, Sierra I don't know if something is wrong with us. We. I mean, what is, what is the difficulty in filling your asset declaration and depositing it in secret with the commission? Why do people have to run after you? But if there, it's not that system. Now that we put out the public notice, gave him an ultimatum, and we have, we have provided that we are dead serious come the 31st of March, these are going to pay this in March or May? 31st of May, if you do not comply with what is happening, the asset declaration office is the busiest office at the AC right now. Everybody is running to declare the assets. In fact, I had to I had to take staff from the public education department, three of them to transfer them to the asset declaration department 
to help out with the with the pressure that is coming for access declaration. Now we are, so we are hopeful that if this continues this way, of course we'll be, able able to to hit, we'll be able to hit the target that we, we aspire for. We are also told uh, to declare assets, uh, income, uh, liabilities. What forms assets? What forms income and probably even the liabilities? Assets are what you own. What you own. For example, it could be movable and immovable. Immovables are houses, things that are fixed in nature, land, properties, whatsoever that is fixed in nature machinery factories those are all fixed assets okay or immovable assets then we have movable assets it could be the laptop that you own there it could be your television in your house it could be your 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 freezer deep freezer your fridge things that my bed own. yes well not necessarily your bed those ones are we we refer to those as um they are more your uh there's who call them up just but i was hoping to call my pay yeah no not those ones things that are that qualify as assets that are of substantial value that you ought to declare so there is no particular description if you want to declare your bed particularly for example there are people who have beds that are that are that are worth fifteen thousand dollars why not you have to declare it it's such a valuable but it does not mean if your bed is is, is, a, is a is a normal bed you have to declare that but you have to declare for example, if you own um, split units in your house, if you own TVs, if you own certain electrical consumables and all those things, you have to declare them because they qualify as, as assets. You asked about liabilities. Mm -hmm. Liabilities, for example, are when you owe debt. Okay? So, for example, in asset declaration that was done, remember there was issue that came with certain amount that was owed by the former president to commercial bank. That is the debt, but that was easily verifiable when it went to the commission of inquiry because it was declared in his asset declaration that he was taking debt over time from 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 Sierra Leone Commercial Bank. And it was clear there, and many public officers will always declare that they owe. Sometimes people take mortgages, people take loans to engage certain things to pay their children's school fees and all those things. So those are the kinds of debts that you owe that you have to declare, so that it shows. That you owe that kind of money if not as the same way you are held accountable for not declaring your assets you could be held accountable for not declaring your debt because debt is a very serious corruption risk if you have certain amount of debt hanging over you there's a pressure on you to be corrupt and if you had your debt when you collect money for example you may not put it in your account so it will be difficult to trace but it is easy to trace if we know that there is a hole somewhere that you are filling. So you may have probably hundred thousand euros in your in your in your bank account, but that does not mean you you do not have money. It's just because you have a negative somewhere that you are trying to fill with the twenty million euros, fifty million euros you have been getting, and those that you have been getting could have been corruptly acquired. So it will, so you have to declare your assets as much as you declare your liabilities your you also have to to declare your, your income your income is basically your salary for example you are a dg of 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 of, of this institution how much are you paid at the end of the month i am acc commissioner how much i'm paid at the month the president how much is paid a salary that, that is your income what you work for and are paid is your income now you are also a lawyer yes and much as probably you might not be going to court you know um to defend or prosecute as a case maybe mm -hmm. but maybe you'll be uh preparing some conveyances you'll be advising people as a case maybe from you know we are maybe you generate some income as well uh you are also maybe a tutor at the um, um university assuming you are paid whether or not these are just um allowances you know even if not salaries in the true sense of the word do you declare those yes you have to declare you have to declare all sources of income to you so for example if you do not declare that you are getting money as a as a lecturer at the university okay but you declare that you are being paid at slbc x amount of money okay if down the line it is discovered that you are having money there you did not declare that is an offense you could have willfully failed to declare your income 
because what you declared is what we call under declaration so when you under declare it's an offense you have to make sure to the best of your ability and knowledge you can always identify the areas where money will come from for you and you you put them in your assets so tomorrow if somebody sees let's say your right here is 15 million news and later there's another income stream coming from somewhere that is 10 million news somebody will say wait a minute this is corrupt why are we getting if we are going to assess at the end of the let's say you've acquired certain assets you built a house if you base an assessment of your income stream to only what you are getting at slbc it's just for us to multiply the 15 million euros by the number of years you are here to be able to reach a, a rule of thumb conclusion as to what would have been your reasonable income and to see but if also you can say wait a minute i was also getting from this my guy i already put it there so we have to put that 10 million news that were coming in every year to the 15 million news that is now 25 million news you can see how that could make a difference in determining whether the lifestyle that you live is commensurate to what you own and that includes subtracting what you've been paying your children's school fees what you have been using to travel overseas and come back what you have been doing to have a life buy vehicles buy fuel for your vehicle and those those things so it's always better for you to identify every income stream that you have to be able to to properly declare your is there room for rectification because i know by this program a lot of people are you know learning some stuff some learning is taking place in a way some people may have you know deposited their there are asset forms, you know, uh, with the ACC and all of this, but maybe have realized that, oh, they needed to do X, Y, Z. Can that be retrieved or is there room to re-submit? Uh, this is an opportunity for every public officer to do a once in a lifetime for another two years declaration. So whether you have declared before, go to the ACC, go to, 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 to the to, to Lotto building where the office that is in charge of asset declaration is, get your asset declaration form now declare once and for all and i have to also clarify that when you are declaring there are certain assets that are owned by 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 your spouse and other dependents which you also have to declare so if your house you own a house with your wife jointly or whosoever it is it may be your ex-wife it may be your children you have to declare it so these are all things you have to keep an eye for when you are declaring your assets because failure to do so could be an under declaration or it could be a false declaration for assets my attention is also drawn to even farms a farm if i own a farm if you own a farm usually if you are a partner in the farm it means you have a percentage interest in the farm you are supposed to declare that income farm as in f-a-r-m oh i thought it's f-i-r-m no yes both f-a-r-m is an asset f-i-r-m is also an asset so you have to make sure that if you are in that circumstance, you declare both. All right. Um, the program is bottom line. It's coming to you from our area, SLBC Broadcasting House here in Freedom. My guest tonight is the Commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, and we'll be discussing the much talked about asset declaration uh, for the past weeks, well, uh, for the past fortnight, if you like. And let's see what some of our viewers have been saying. Please, Commissioner, are teachers within grade 7 to declare assets or these are or there are specifications for school teachers? School teachers, grade 7. You, you want to note some of these uh, messages well, online, uh, if you can. We can go quickly. Okay. Uh, these are questions I can go quickly as you're going. Mm -hmm. Grade 7 and above are supposed to declare the assets. It does not matter whether you're a teacher or you work in an office whatsoever your position is as long as you are now in the category of grade and above you're supposed to declare your assets mr commissioner i've been trying to complete my asset declaration form online but to no avail i fill the form on the website they are supposed to send a link to my email which i am yet to receive since last week please advise uh i don't understand the particular circumstance of this person but I believe the asset declaration, the online asset declaration regime works and it works properly. You are supposed to simply fill the form. Um, it used to be that you have to download and then take it to the Justice of the Peace. But even that, in this new amendment, we have now removed it. Now you don't need the Justice of the Peace, you don't need the Commission of Oath. You only have to affirm and that affirmation is sufficient as if you've done so before the Commission of Oath 
or you've done it before a justice of the peace so that is what it is what is happening with the online asset declaration regime is that we are now changing it for everything to be online based so you now simply fill your asset declaration form on the online and you you hit your declaration button and you hit your submit button and it goes so you don't have to print or attach anything i don't know what the particular um problem with this person is but um i will i will announce a number that the person should call at the end of the program please remind me so that they can call the head of the asset declaration unit so that they can be able to clarify some of these things for them and i'm going to check what he's saying because i'm not even aware of this issue of a link being sent to him i believe you feel everything you download and you you you, you upload and then you submit that is how it has always thanks to the SABC for such a program i was expecting a critical mind but i must confess that the acc is doing well do you have a database for public officials in the country, Mr. Commissioner? Yes, we, in fact, what we did was, once the new amendment came in, and that is part of the reason why we are not holding anybody accountable just yet. Because we wrote to every institution, I'm sure you received our letter, or your HR office received our letter. We also wrote to the Accountant General, we wrote to the HIMO, we wrote to the Cabinet Secretariat, for them to give us all those public officers who are within these categories that have been as identified in the asset declaration regulation and that is those uh, grade seven above who are fiduciaries or otherwise are political appointees as the case may be so from that we have been able to create a database of public officers that are of interest to us mr commissioner do you check whether the assets declared by public officials are correct this is from another uh, um, observer yes in fact one of the reasons why the asset declaration system has been extended by two years is to give us that room now before by the time we check a new asset declaration year has started we don't have the time to do it now we are going to have an entire one year we are going to in fact bring in asset declaration analysts we're going to bring in asset declaration analysts specifically trained to sit down and check whether your declaration is accurate to go and confirm so for example if you put your property which is one billion news or of two billion news and you say it is 200 million news we'll go and look at it and we'll see whether in fact it is two billion news if it's two billion news it means you have made a false declaration and you could be penalized for it and of course we could call you and examine you as to the reasons why you chose to under declare so we are going to have all the time now to be able to follow up these things the analysts will do their work we are also if it's not for covid we are already working with the imf the imf we are about to to help us with a software that we're able to to set asset declaration in such a way for example if if mr x a public officer has an income stream of, of 40 million news per month whenever there is a jump in that income stream the software system will pick it up and fly more text messages coming in but let me just let me just insert this in uh commission i mean you just made one point assuming this computer is going for uh 20 million euros i mean that is the 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 worth of this computer but i decide to sell it uh you know at uh, let's say 10 million euros either because of some personal circumstances or otherwise and you actually purchased it at that price 10 million euros but then your um whoever will be verifying this gets to actually see the worth of it at 20 million euros would that be deemed corrupt and that is why um you have to give a fair market value okay you can sell anything at any time any price you want so you can sell your house which is worth two billion news if you are really in trouble and you need 100 million news right now and you think a house worth two billion news is worth 100 million news to you you can sell it for that. the purchaser I mean, i'm talking about the position of the purchaser who will be declaring to you the purchaser who is declaring this house to do million. he has to do his best to declare a fair market value so if he bought the property at a hundred and fifty thousand dollars okay or when he was building the property he spent two hundred thousand dollars on the property if now they say acc come and get acc and he says it's hundred million news my friend that is not it is it is it's a false declaration and you know it so it is a question of a, a fair market value what you think if today forget about the fact that you are under pressure if i want to sell this property what will it be worth 
and you do that taking into consideration what you spent on it don't forget the price of the land upon which it stands in america they say location location you are, you are, you are, you are location more on the i am also trying to direct your mind to the purchaser who will be declaring to you this purchaser has bought this house at 50 million dollars he will prove it and the worth of the house actually like you would imagine mm -hmm. is 150 million so the purchaser has to declare the worth of the house as he know it not how much he bought it so the acquisition is a different the acquisition thing. is a different thing and that is not what we are concerned about let's, let's it's about the value of the house at the time if you are in doubt you can ask experts to help you all right this sort of text i seen commissioner your online platform is not working the education on filing or rather filling the forms is poor most of the things you have mentioned that are to be declared are not included in the forms maybe next declaration like what and i wish this stuff this person could have told me what is not could have told me what is not really in the form because i know that that form is comprehensive to cover your assets your liabilities your assets of your dependent rules and yourself equities you hold in in companies like shares and all those other things it is all there so i hope that person has not misled himself into believing that certain things are not there i advise that person to come back to the commission and speak to us so that we can be able to guide him properly to fill the form because everything i have said is in that form maybe the english may be a problem maybe for example when shares are are, are, are rating as equities people don't believe understand that shares is the same thing as equity but it's all there why must we declare liabilities to the extent that even ususu should be declared yes ususu should be declared ususu is a is a is what is why because it's a liability i am not the one who made the law it's parliament made the law and parliament says you have to declare your assets and liabilities so if you have to contribute ususu for the next 11 months you have to declare that you are you are you are you you'll be in debt by that amount for that 11 months but you can also put it there that you're expecting to get from that ususu x amount at the end so it's easy so if somebody goes let's say the ususu brings you 200 million at the end of the year it will be a serious red flag if we see your salary is 10 10 million news and suddenly we see 200 million news in your account you it will be difficult for you to explain but if you you've already declared that you are expecting your ususu to, to, to be matured at the end of the year and the 200 million comes in it's easy for us to know that you're not a corrupt person that you merely have declared and that is what has now materialized so these are like i said as a declaration really is good it's good for the public servant i don't even understand why public officers sweat themselves when it comes to public because as a declaration is what protects them it's what will protect you tomorrow it's what when people are asking questions about you it is that one thing that you can bring out to show that before i came you know public officers most times i see people sit on television on radio oh i was a very rich man before i was appointed oh i had worked in ECOWAS, i had worked in in in, in the un i made a lot of money prove it show us if not we're not going to open your brain to find out how much money you were earning when you were at the un put it there that when you came this was what was in your account at the time you came and when you are leaving we know that what you earn is what you live by if not if we come and meet one million dollars in your account i am sorry it is not your un money it's stolen money you don't want that kind of thing to hang over your head is that what you call uh, unexplained wealth that is what unexplained wealth is when you suddenly have money that you cannot explain how you got it so you are not going to, to wait after five years in office suddenly there is three million dollars in your account and you say i was working at the un that is the money no you declare it at the time you came in so we know you had three million dollars lying somewhere before you came so when we meet three million dollars in your account we know that oh yes it is his money. you don't have to be boastful about it to us you don't have to say that i i was working and i was making money do you, do you want to try me do you know how long i worked that's how people ask no but, don't ask us declare it yes once you declare it's easy for everybody to know when that time comes it's even easy for you like i told you the state chief of protocol was saved 
because she had declared in 2013 that she's building a house an unfinished house and put the value there and we are capable of tracking it coming all the way to 2018 when she was appointed we know that the time she was appointed by the time she was appointed in 2018 she was already on finishing so it will be very difficult for you to say that she finished this house or she build this house once she gives it cheap of protocol. All right. those, and that applies to every other public public officer. Those asset declaration aid your prosecution in court. Yes. How? Because if you do not declare your assets, it makes it easy for us to prove that the wealth you have is stolen. And don't forget, on explained wealth, the burden is on you. So all we have to do is to go to court and say, this is the wealth of this man. This wealth the man has only been in office for two years. There is no way he can own it. It is for you to now explain that when I was in office these two years, I was getting my salary of 60 million euros a month. Out of that 60 million euros, I was saving 50 million euros. It is that 50 million euros. Also, my wife was doing business. She was selling palm oil and she was getting a minimum, minimum 30 million euros. It is this 60 million euros and that 30 million euros that I was getting per month that we have put together and that is how we are capable of buying this property that we have. If you convince the court, you are well and good. But if you do not convince the court, then unexplained wealth. Now, Commissioner, if you also want to say this, how do we measure, if you like, asset declaration as a good principle of governance? Well, asset declaration is one of the really best practices everywhere in the world because it, it, it creates a, a standard to measure public officers income it creates a measure for you to be able to track their worth it also puts a sort of pressure on them to understand that with that it's easy for them to be probed and that is why most public officers refuse to declare their assets because you see when police officers come to carry out a raid in a particular place, what do they do? They send tear gas. The tear gas is to create a smoke, and in that chaos, anything can happen. Not so. You will not be able to see. They can easily arrest whosoever. They can even do a lot of things, and nobody will be able to see. Smoke covers a lot of things. So public officers refuse to declare their assets because you will not be able to track. So those who say, do you know when I was working in the UN how much money I had? It's a smoke. Because it creates a situation where you're not capable of tracking. What do you mean by when you were working in the UN? Are you telling us that when you were working in the UN, all the money you were getting, you were just saving, you never ate it, you never paid your children's school fees, you never traveled overseas, you were never sick, you did not pay medical? Those are the kinds of things. So, but once you create that kind of smoke screen, I was working in the UN, I was working in the ECOWAS, I was working for government, and now I am in this position. Don't think that every money I have comes from this position. It becomes difficult to track. But once you anchor yourself with the asset declaration regime, you don't have to explain. We already know right. what you had. Okay. Now, in this day of social media, in this day of WhatsApp, what's the level of confidentiality at the ACC? We've seen leaks. We've seen a lot of um, 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 you know uh, letters, social media, and what's no, no, no. But you've never seen a letter. Ministries and the like. And you've never people are actually really, you've really never really seen really. anything outside of the ACC. That does not suggest it will not happen. No, it will not. Ha I'm not saying it will not happen. But what I am saying, for example, when when I became commissioner at ACC, the first thing I did is to is to redraft the oath of confidentiality and disclosure that is taken by staff at the ACC and give all of them including myself to sign okay then our our paper system is done in such a way it is easy to track if for example a document leaks today we will know that it leaked from from Mr. X system and Mr. X knows that 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 document which I made him sign at the time when I came in at the ACC means he will have to dismiss himself he does not have to wait for me that is why there has been no leakage at the ACC whatsoever since I've been there. And when it comes to asset declaration, the law says asset declaration to the ACC shall be in secret and shall be treated by every director, manager and staff of the ACC as a secret and in confidentiality. So, when have you ever seen an asset declaration of anybody on social media? except if he himself put it puts it there which is fine like i've always said when people ask me oh 
as public officers are supposed to declare the assets publicly. I said, okay, me, there is a law that says when I receive asset declaration, I should receive it in spirit and in confidence. If that law is changed today and it now says that when I receive it, I should put it public out so, gladly. But for now, it says I should do so in secret. It will remain in secret. If you really want to see that person's asset declaration, go to him. Go to her. If he decides to put his asset declaration on the internet, on social media, so be it. But it will not come from the ACC. It will not come from Commissioner Kaifala. It will not come from any staff. I mean, we are getting to um, um, the time already. Maybe we will need to just have our part in short as a case may be. You are also be trying to talk to us more about, well, you said we should not lean more on the punitive aspect of this. But in the uh, May 31st, is around the corner. What's your message to the people of Sierra Leone listening and watching you? Well, all I can say is um, at the ACC, we do not issue threats that we do not hope to follow through. So, are you invoking the scorpion? On we this? don't have to impose a scorpion for this. We are imposing the administrative sanctions that have been established by law. So, you do not declare your assets by the May, by May 31. If we are capable, if we find out that we have not given you any extension, we'll simply write to the Accountant General to withhold your salary. And that is going to happen without having to have any recourse to you. It's going to be as a matter of course. And I am going to say this, there are many who have not declared, for example, the military. We are still waiting for them and that is a huge constituency when it comes to asset declaration. The police. It's a huge constituency when it comes to asset declaration. The police and the military have not declared their assets? Well, most of them have not. Most teachers have not. Most members of parliament have not declared their assets. The ministers have done extremely well. About 80% or more have declared their assets as of now. You mean honorable members of parliament have not? The declared? honorable members of parliament, only about 20% have declared their assets. So, and it, I am not picking them out. I'm just pointing out the areas that are huge constituencies where people are not about lecturers? declaring their assets. Lecturers as well are not declaring their assets. So, when that time comes, I don't want somebody to think that it is Mr. Kaifala. You have decided that you do not want your salary for the next month. And when that time comes, be not surprised when the Accountant General does not pay. And just before we go, I mean, you you are to be reminded about a particular number uh, to disclose the members of the public. Yes, yes, it's yes. Um, so far as reaching out. Yes. Um, let me, apologies, let me just take it out. And whilst you are going through that, I'm not sure we have time, but I was also going to insert this IMSA Commissioner. You are doing a great job, but you need to focus your attention on the public sector, please. Uh, probably uh, civil service also. Where am I focusing my attention? Is the public sector that focus? No room for corruption in Sierra Leone anymore. How effective is the assessment of the asset declaration? This is also. Well, we are trying to make it very efficient and effective right now, and that is why we amended the law and it's coming. The number that you call is zero seven six six one seven. 792 076-617-792 this number will clarify to you what you are supposed to do what you are not supposed to do if you are having difficulties with the online platform you call this number she will be able to explain to you what to do and sometimes they can assist so the handler is you what the handler there is a she yes the person is a she all right let's end again um that's all we have time for in this edition of bottom line uh, that came to you from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. The guest has been Commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission, the ACC, Mr. Francis Ben Kaifala. And this is just another call to all members, who well, are not members of the public, but public officials, all public officials, so from the consolidated form to dis declare their assets on or before the 31st of May this year. That is the extended version of what was actually the that the 1st of March or the 30th of March of this year. So hopefully we expect all officers to do that. Otherwise, um, you face the music. Hopefully we'll have people clearing their asses before then. This program, as usual, was produced by Tini Kuruma. And with many thanks to members of the technical crew, if you missed part of all of this edition, we are back next next week, I would say, with another edition of Bottom Line. I've been your presenter, Joseph Ibinda Kapua. Wishing you all a lovely evening. Bye-bye. Thank you.